Hey, what's up guys? Mr. Wise here from Unify Inventive and today I want to talk about camera settings. As a videographer, it is very important for you to know the settings of your camera and how to set them correctly. There are so many settings on a camera and one of the most important setting is the exposure and that's what I'm going to be talking about. Now, what is the exposure? Now, this is the amount of light that hits the sensor of your camera and it's very crucial because it determines how bright or dark your video or your picture is going to be. So if you let in too much light inside a camera, your picture will be overexposed or your video will be overexposed. But then if you let in very little light to enter inside the camera, then your picture will be underexposed. Now the camera has got three settings that control exposure. Number one is the iris the ISO and the shutter speed. All these three settings can let in more or less light inside a camera, but then as they do so, they generate something extra individually. So it is very important for you to find the right balance of these three settings. Now let's start with the iris or the aperture. Now this is an adjustable opening which controls the amount of light coming through the lens. Most of the time the aperture or the iris is electronically adjustable by a dial on a camera body. Somewhere on the camera there is a dial where you can adjust the, cam uh, the aperture electronically. But if you are using a manual lens, you have to open and close the aperture by the ring on the lens itself. Now the bigger the opening of the aperture, the more light will enter through the lens to the camera. And the lesser opening of the aperture, the lesser light will enter through the camera. It also controls the depth of field. So the larger the aperture, the shallower depth of field you're going to have and the smaller the aperture, the deeper depth of field you're going to have. Next up, let us look at the ISO or the International Standards Organization, ISO. It is also an exposure setting that measures how sensitive the sensor of the camera is to the light. So the higher number of ISO, the more sensitive the sensor is going to be to the light and the lesser number of ISO, the lesser sensitive the sensor of the camera is going to be to the light. Now depending on what camera you are using, the higher you dial the ISO number, the more sensitive the sensor of that camera is going to be to the light, but then it will generate something extra, which is digital noise. As the ISO increases, the camera will also begin to generate digital noise, which is almost always never wanted in videos. So you need to find or discover the highest ISO number your camera can go before it can start generate this digital noise. And the third one, let's talk about the shutter speed, which is defined as how long your sensor is exposed to the light. Now, whilst you are filming, the sensor will always open digitally for a certain amount of time. And if the sensor is exposed longer to light, more light will be captured and this is a slow shutter. But it will also generate something extra, which is motion blur. To demonstrate this, if I'm waving at a camera whilst shooting with a slow shutter, you'll notice the blurry hand when I pause the video. But if I'm shooting at a faster shutter speed, you will notice the whole hand being in focus when I pause the video. So in videography, this picture we paused is called a frame and video works with multiple frames per second. For example, 25 frames per second, 30 frames per second, other cameras can even record at 50 or 60 frames per second, other cameras even way high like 120 frames per second and even higher. Now the reason why I'm talking about frame rate is because the shutter speed goes hand in hand with frame rate. So when you look at your hand while it's waving with your natural eye, you will see that it has got some blurriness to it just through your eye. This is called natural motion blur. So even in cameras, there is a certain rule for achieving that natural motion blur. Now the rule is if you want to achieve a natural motion blur, you need to set up your shutter speed at a double value of your frame rate. For example, if you are filming at 25 frames per second, you need to set your shutter speed at 1 50th of a second. Or for example, if you are filming at 60 frames per second, you need to set your shutter speed at 1 one twentieth of a second. You get the idea. Now these were the three settings that change your exposure. 